Something incredible happened to me one afternoon on the 18th of November 2020. I was uh, with my daughter walking on Botanic Road in Belfast and we went into a second-hand bookstore. And in that bookstore, I saw a very curious book by uh, Dominican Yves Congar, The Mystery of the Temple. I remember looking at this book and thinking it, it really did sit out of place in this bookstore. I think it was the it was an Oxfam Oxfam bookstore on the Botanic Road, and it was a it it was a book by a French Dominican, The Mystery of the Temple. And uh, I I uh, it, it was I I looked at it. I bought it. It was fifty pounds at the time, which I thought was expensive for a second hand book, but. Um, something was appealing to me, um, and this, you know, Yves Congar was an incredible theologian. He died in the early 1990s, I remember. I was in Rome at the time, and, and if I remember correctly, Pope John Paul II made him a cardinal before he died. Prolific writer, 170-something titles or something like that, as far as I'm aware, the last time I was checking. But um, he... He wrote. He wrote this one of. This is one of his books. One of his works, and it's very readable. It was, you know, it. It wasn't so theological because sometimes you can have theological texts that are so dense that you say, "Oh, I can't do this." Um, you know, something. Some of um, Saint Thomas Aquinas's writings. Um, you know, they 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 take a, a little bit getting into. But I I thought that the structure of the book, the way it was written. Uh, it it appealed to me and it, if we go back to 2020 it was during the lockdown uh, i i used to go up to belfast and and stay with my brother just to get out of the monotony because i was in, working from home at the time and i was really losing my mind uh, you know with the with the way things were going so the lockdown was an interesting experience and even when there was restrictions and so forth and up north we had different restrictions to down south it was a bit crazy so uh you know during during that period that covid period that 20 year 2020 one of the books that i did read was the mystery of the temple and it kind of drew me back in then to reading uh, hebrews i'm just going to read you something here and it's hebrews um hebrews 10 verse 19 and 20 Therefore, my friends, since we have confidence to enter the sanctuary by the blood of Jesus, by the new and living way that he opened for us through the curtain, that is, through his flesh, and since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us approach with a true heart in full assurance of faith, with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. And why am I bringing people into him? Why am I qu even quoting Hebrews here? And why am I talking about this this book by a, a French theologian, which sadly many Catholics have forgotten today? Um, because he, he, he kind of he kind of resurrected in me in a, a renewed consciousness of the of the beautiful mysteries of our Catholic faith. You know, this is a man that wrote 170 something books at, at the time. Um, you know, in Rome, I, I met some incredible Dominicans and um, they really were able to captivate your mind. Like if you're reading, as I said, the book isn't really densely theological it's a very i mean i have a seminary formation and i can read it and i did find it interesting but it was a, it was just an interesting uh, uh, book to bring you into the mysteries you know because you know christ christ you know the heavenly jerusalem is a jerusalem without this physical temple because our lord is the temple um you know our lord is the way the truth and the life um you know and uh unlike in the eight in the in before christ's sacrifice when the priest had to go up into the holy of holies once a year after after having made a blood sacrifice of a lamb um you know our, our lord our lord 
with his sacrifice on the cross, you know, ends one thing and begins something incredibly new. And again, I'm not sadly not a theologian, not able to explain it as, as much as I'd like to. But, um, you know, our Lord is present at this moment in time in the church. And he's again bringing us into that uh, new it's, well, it's 2,000 years now, but he's drawing us ever more and more into his divine um, company, his divine presence. And you can be an incredible theologian or you can be a simple man, but Christ is the same to both of us. And he draws us in and he, and he brings us into his friendship and he brings us into his company and he shows us that he is the way, the truth and the life. Um. He, draw, he brings us metaphorically through the, through the temple, you know, through the different parts, up through this, this veil, and, and he brings us into that, to, to that holy presence. I think in 2023, we are failing a whole generation of Catholics in not being able to express the incredible depth and beauty of our Catholic faith. When you read Hebrews... Uh, which I did during the pandemic, not just read it, when you actually study it, take, di- take time and do a 10-day course just on Hebrews alone. You're just, you just say, oh, wow, if, I, if, if people knew about the deep beauty of our faith, they wouldn't be traipsing off to other things, to study other things, in the sense that they would, f- they would be captivated by our Catholic faith, which is incredible, which is beautiful. And this is what we need to repropose again to the next generation. When I look at the, what, what was going on in the synod and the synodality and the, these different reports, and I said, look, you have this whole wealth of faith, whole wealth, scripture, faith, theological discussions, ongoing. Th- and we are nowhere near able to repropose this to the next generation in a, in a truly meaningful way. In a way that captivates people's minds, you know, it really does. I mean, if you one thing you could say say about Yves Congar, I mean, he was captivated by the faith. He was captivated. I mean, his books. Uh, it's it's he's it, you really could not say otherwise. And we need to captivate a new generation with the faith. We need to captivate them to understand that who is present in our liturgy, in the. In the, who is present in the Eucharist and the, the what he did for us and what he means for us now and what he can do in our lives. You know, we have to repropose that. We have to, we have to open the veil. We have, to, we have to tear the veil open again because in a sense, we have put a veil. People forget in the temple, the, this veil was four inches thick. You know, when, the, when, when there's the account in the gospel that after Christ's um, death that the veil was split in two. And people often think, you see in some movies, that it's like a, a piece of, it's like a curtain. It's just a curtain. It, the veil of the temple was not a curtain. It was four inches thick of fine linen. And, uh, you know, we have, we have created an a even stronger veil in the last decades, we've created an even stronger veil preventing people to have access to Christ. Because they don't know. They don't know. They haven't been taught. We haven't captivated hearts and minds, especially hearts. We haven't captivated hearts and minds with the mystery of our faith, the Eucharist. And going back to Hebrews 19, um, you know, therefore, my friend, since... We have confidence to enter the sanctuary by the blood of Jesus, by the new and living way. And Christ is the new and living way. He is the new new and living way. But people don't know this. We haven't taught them. I wasn't taught in, in secondary school. Catechesis was appalling. And it still is today. You know, we look at our secondary school um books we have dumbed down the faith so much it is meaningless pointless and irrelevant to the majority of irish catholics 
I could point you to, I've seen the three books that my kids had, and it is pointless, irrelevant, and meaningless to the majority of Irish Catholics because we haven't brought them into the depths of understanding or challenging them that you would find in something like what Eve Conkar was talks about. And, and it isn't overly difficult to, to read it, but nobody ta- told us, nobody taught us. I'm sure there's somewhere in the gospel, in the Bible, sorry, and I'm and I'm struggling with the quote. My my uh, my people are are lost for lack of for lack of um, for lack of pastors. For I mean I'm struggling with the quote here. But my and it's this vision is coming to my mind at this moment when I'm doing this video. My people are lost because they haven't been shepherded. They haven't been pastored. They haven't been told. Um. You know, so I, I do encourage I do encourage people to, to take up this challenge of passing on the faith, of explaining it, expanding it out, giving it giving the meat, giving people cap to captivate hearts and minds in this moment in time. And with the men's adoration coming up in Derry, um, you know, I, I challenge men to 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 dig deeper into understanding your faith. You know, sometimes we, 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 our faith is, 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 is so, is so, um, sometimes what the, our Catholic, our Catholic life can be so lost in the sense that we don't give, we don't feed it. We don't keep feeding it and, and, and then developing it, encouraging it and expanding it. It's, it's, it, it's, we listen to a homily on a Sunday, which oftentimes doesn't captivate hearts and minds. Uh, and we're not able to engage our kids and the next generation in the depths of our faith. So, you know, I think I think if Yves Congar was alive today, I'd love to know what he thinks of, of the current situation in the church and uh, the current theological situation in the church and the, the current discussions we're getting in the church. Uh, because I think we have really lost sight of of captivating hearts and minds with the faith i really do i really do um and i think you know we could do so much more to feed people because one thing i'll say and it was mentioned in the last sinners they crit- criticized the online phenomenon they criticized the online phenomenon of bloggers and i never never in my life intended to blog never in my life did i intend to do a channel couldn't was really didn't think I was worthy or prepared to do it but you know what I said you know I'll I'll start it and a lot of people listen to me and listen to other different catholic bloggers but there is a wealth of 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 formation that we could be getting if others that have the doctorates the the, the knowledge if they could actually feed us if they could actually you know for example, if somebody was actually put this in a blog format on, on YouTube so people could listen to to this. I mean, I was just thinking, you know, an audiobook. There isn't this. This is um, this this for, for this particular book is actually is is actually one of those academically lost titles that you, you, you nearly can't buy it. This book costs a hundred dollars. Uh, it's not available on 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 audiobooks. It's not available on YouTube. But this is the type of thing that that people would might find interesting uh, to educate themselves, uh, along with other works, <laughs> other theological works, and uh, so that we can expand out the the the, the knowledge that, that people are looking for. Because there are lots of Catholics in Ireland now that are desperate for. Uh, formation catholic formation they're they're looking for it they're feeding off it they're they're listening to my videos and i'm just a very poor blocker in reality when others could do it a lot better and that's the challenge i'm really going to set in ireland if we're going to use our social media which has been discussed in the synod let's do it to give the formation let's do it to give the formation to to, to of this beautiful faith that we have so that people can can better connect with the faith and better understand it because you can you know having a personal relationship with god you know creates a hunger to know him more to be honest 
and and some Catholics are, are, are hungry there. Some Catholics are getting a conversion. You know, they get a profound conversion and they come back and they're and they're on fire for the faith and they struggle to get formation. There's very little formation. And that's the sad, sad reality. And you know, we we have to be there to challenge them in this moment of time. Anyway, I just thought I'd I'd share that anecdote really of of how Eve Congar, uh, you know, kept st- started me on a, a path of of challenging myself to know the faith more, and uh, which he did in the in the lockdown. Strangely enough, this particular book was owned by somebody else, and. Uh, um, I won't mention his name, but uh, it was a uh, when I saw who who previously owned it, I, I just thought it was interesting. But I, you know, I'm going to challenge challenge Catholics now, and and maybe this is a project that we should be doing, is to try and feed Catholics better in Ireland with the faith. You know, try and bring them into the deep, deep mystery of our faith. Uh, you know, and as I said, regards scripture, you know, I. Bishop Barron has started this project of this is the the acts and the letters he has started this project of doing the the bible in in different um, volumes with commentaries with um his own commentary and commentaries of the saints we could be doing so much more to expand out and to feed people with the faith it is so dense and so rich people wouldn't be the, the, the fastest growing movement in Ireland is, is New Age. It is spiritualism, yoga, Buddhism, you know, all of these Eastern things. That's the fastest growing mindfulness. This is the fastest growing religious movement in, in Ireland. I'm spiritual, but I'm not religious. And why are people so captivated by that? Because they've never been fed what Eve Congar was fed. We've not done it. it. Wasn't done for me. Didn't know anything about this in in, in a Catholic secondary school in the nineteen eighties. If it wasn't for the grace of God that I was able to go to Rome, and be exposed to you know the the beauty of the faith in a different way, I wouldn't know. I wouldn't know. And that is the the reality with so many Catholics in Ireland. They don't know what they don't know because nobody has told them, nobody's fed them, nobody's pastored them. And you can see that come out in the Irish census document in the Synod. And you can see it today. You you know, our teenagers, our, 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 our university students, they don't know what, because they've never been taught, they've never been fed. And now we have the medium to do it online. Let's start feeding them. Let's start feeding Irish Catholics, this next generation, the deep mysteries of the beautiful, deep mysteries of the Catholic faith, Uh, especially prayer. There is a guy on YouTube, Jan Corey. You can look it up. Jan Corey, Praying with the Heart, guy on YouTube. He has his own channel and you know, he's going through St. John of the Cross. He's going through all the Carmelite spirituality, how to pray. Uh, the, the obstacles in the spiritual life you know a wealth of knowledge you know and I admire his work I, you know if I'm in the car I'll usually put on an episode of what he's doing and we should we can be doing more of this because when we open hearts and minds to to the faith and people realize oh Christ is real hold on a second Christ is real he's actually real he's actually alive in the Eucharist in that encounter, he's actually alive when we meet another person. You know, we've, we encounter the likeness and image of God in that other person. We realize, oh, I have to change the way I act. I have to change the way I live my life. You know, I have to help this other person get to heaven. That they may know Christ, know his love. It is, it is incredibly important. You know, the faith is serious. We can, we have to take up this challenge to give this message to the next generation. And that's, you know, that's why I feel so passionate about it. And I do feel the hand of God in all of this in my life because I didn't go looking for Eve's Congar. I, the book was there in the window in a secondhand bookstore on the 18th of November 2020 on Botanic Road in Belfast. I said, you know what, I'm going to buy that. And uh, he certainly, 
he certainly did something yeah. anyway I suppose I want to give this challenge and I want to encourage men especially to come up to the men's adoration in Belfast on the 25th of November you know um, there's a lot of good work that is that has struck off from that last year men came and then some of them are doing the Curseal movement this weekend in in Derry you know let our Lord lead us you know he's not absent he he wants to help us you know we can't do this but he can and uh, and and so I'm encouraging I'm encouraging men I'm speaking specifically them because you know we look at one side you know five to six hundred men take their lives every year well maybe we can offer them something different to what they're living they're living in despair of maybe we can offer them the hope of the faith christ is the way the truth and the life christ is the way the truth you know we see we see as as, as i quoted in 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 um in hebrews the new and living way christ is the new and living way uh, and so you know i just want to to set this challenge and um you know let's let's see what we can do in ireland god bless you take care bye bye